What's up, BookTube? It's a little overcast out here, uh, so maybe that'll be an incentive to keep this short. I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. I don't know if you know that, but it's been like a month, I think. Uh, I'm speaking to you from the... I almost said sunny. It's been very sunny. Uh, neighborhood of Usera in Madrid, and I've been having a fantastic time here. Oh man, I, I love it so much. I'm so glad I came to Spain. Uh, but this is not a travel video. Although I'm sure that would be more interesting than what I'm going to talk about. Anyway, I wanted to do a book uh, update. And I'll, it looks like the storm clouds are coming in, so this might be an incentive to keep it short. I haven't read a ton of stuff. This is what I'm reading right now. To Be a Pilgrim by Joyce Carey, which is the second book in the, it's called The First Trilogy by Joyce Carey, meaning that he wrote more than one trilogy. It's set in the 20s and 30s. I really like it. I don't want to talk about it because I'm only halfway through it. It's, well, one thing I will say about it, in this trilogy, he's got uh, one group of characters that he tells a story about Joyce is a man Joyce carries a man that kind of covers the same ground from three different points of view of three different main characters and it's strange that I'd never heard of this book because I recently read the Alexandria Quartet uh, that has which for all my life I've, I've read about what a, what a major uh, innovation this was. The first book was called Justine, I think. Um, and, you know, this brilliant uh, concept of telling one story about uh, a set of characters, but come just repeating the story, although the Alexandria Quartet only really does that for the first three books, and the, the fourth book, the final book of the Quartet, kind of takes the story on past that point, but uh, and I like those books quite a bit, especially Justine when I read it. But I'm I'm really enjoying this uh, this trilogy. I got uh, I dropped out of it for all because there's other things I wanted to read. Uh, it's Victober, and I wanted to participate in that quite a bit. And like other other every other. Except for Horror Mayhem, uh, I deeply, desperately, vastly either overscheduled or underperformed, however you want to call it, on my, my uh, reading list for that. So what I started out in October, I actually started a couple days early. I thought I made these screenshots. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. I started a few days early by reading this book. Oh, I don't know if that's going to show up very well. This is not the cover I had. I just, I just typically, as I typically do, I read the uh, free version from Project Gutenberg, The Way of All Flesh by Samuel Butler. Depending on how technical you want to be, it might not be a Victorian novel because it was published in 1902. However, it was written in the 1870s by Butler. He didn't want to publish it in his lifetime because of the satirical nature. Uh, it's, it's about a family. Well, it's, it's, it's about one particular character. It reminds me a bit of... I enjoyed it pretty much. It reminds me a bit of... Maybe I would call it a precursor to The Razor's Edge by Somerset Maugham. Sort of a similar character. Sort of a... Once we finally get to the main character... Of course, it's a Victorian novel, so it starts out uh, with that character's grandfather. First 100 pages or 150 pages or so about the grandfather and the father, and then finally the character himself. And it's told from the point of view, and it's a very autobiographical novel by Samuel Butler, but he tells it from the point of view of a, fir a first-person narrator who's sort of a family friend of the family he's discussing. The, post, the Apostle Waits? Was that what it was? It's been a couple weeks now since I read it. Uh, 
very good, not as the most compelling writing. You know, it's, it's pretty much told sort of as a memoir, you know, unlike Dickens or something. It's not as, as lively, but I did enjoy it. Samuel Butler's only other major works were Utopian, Science Fiction, uh, parrot, Satires, Erewhon, and Erewhon Revisited, which I haven't read. In fact, this book, I didn't know anything about it. Just had it on my Kindle. I was scrolling through my Kindle, uh, trying to re-download stuff, which I'll go into in another video. I had quite, a, uh, quite an e-book adventure. I had quite an Amazon adventure. So let me just tease that now. I will do another video soon about all my Amazon adventures for the past two months. And one of the reasons I haven't been posting is, is I'm, I've got a lot of ideas I want to talk about, but as soon as I try and organize them, I, I realize I'm going to get into a one-hour video and I try and break the subjects up and, and blah, blah, blah. So this is pretty disjointed because I'm so out of practice on discussing it. So anyway, I did. that was my first book of October. Uh, then I joined a group read and uh, to read Vanity Fair, and I did not finish it. I couldn't do it. I just I really had a hard time reading it. I had tried to read it before, and I thought I remembered liking it. I'll tell that story, I guess. Uh, I had a copy a long, long time ago of Vanity Fair, and I was reading it and enjoying it. I was maybe a quarter of the way in. I think it was like a Signet paperback, one of the cheap... Uh, class American classic paperbacks they used to put out in the day. Uh, I was walking along the street in London on a trip, and I, there was a bookstore I wanted to go into, and I didn't want to walk in with a book and say, Could you put this at the counter, or, you know, deal with all that or whatever, so I just stuck it in a drain pipe. And... Uh, because I was only in there for a minute. There was just one book I wanted to check out in the window or something like that. I came out, and I figured no one's going to take it. Because I did this all... I used to do this all the time in the States. Uh, this was all many, many years ago. The first time I traveled in my life, which was when, you know, my late teens and early 20s. And I thought, no one's going to take it. I do it all the time. I used to do it all the time in San Francisco and other places I lived. And so I come out... 30 seconds later, come out, the book is gone. Somebody snagged it. I hope they enjoyed it, and I didn't get around to buying another copy of it. <coughs> but I remember from that time loving the first chapter, loving the end of the first chapter particularly, where Becky Sharp tosses. Uh, well, I don't want to give it away. It's, it's it's a great. There's a great moment in the in the first chapter at the end of it, which kind of gives away Becky Sharp's character. We see what kind of person we're going to be with which I thought was pretty cool, although I did completely misremember the book <laughs> that she'd thrown out. I thought she had thrown a... I thought it was a Bible. All these years, I thought that the book, the beginning of that book, so I always meant to get back to it and see what happens after she... But it wasn't a Bible at all. It was a dictionary. Which made it... Which was kind of disappointing when I realized I misremembered it because... You know, it's thrown out a dictionary. What's the what's the big deal? Uh, even Dr. Johnson's dictionary. But I just could not get into it. I could not get into those paragraphs. Were so thick. I I know I sound like a real philistine here, but I just found the writing so dense and slow, and uh, not engaging at all. So uh, I couldn't do it. Uh, a couple years ago, I had watched the movie called Becky Sharp with Marion Hopkins from, I think, like, 31 or something, 1931 or something. Uh, a pre-code movie. I really got into Marion Hopkins uh, around that time. And she's a fantastic actress that had a pretty short career because she, you know, she really hated Hollywood. She didn't like it. Um, she did some fantastic movies in the 30s that stand with anything. I mean, if she'd have kept, if she'd have kept working right through her adult life, she'd probably be as famous and still as known as Joan Crawford or, or, um, or Betty Davis, something like that. She's really in that caliber. You got to see that movie. Uh, her, 
she's uh, in the the Dr. Jekyll and, and Mr. Hyde movie from that period, the one starring Frederick Mar- March, which I never watched until I was starting to hunt down every Marion Hopkins movie because, and that was one of the reasons I never saw many of her movies because the male leads she was with most of the time were just guys I don't like. Like Frederick March, I think he's a very boring actor, although he's excellent. Uh, he's excellent in uh, that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from 32 or 31 or whenever it was, you know, the, the three great years of Hollywood cinema, the three greatest years, 31, 32, 33, you know, after sound came in and before the Hayes, cough, Hayes code really cracked down, it's where all the best movies were made of all time. And I'll die on that hill. I'm really off topic again. So, uh, and I enjoyed that that movie of it. Obviously, you know, a 90-minute movie made in the 30s is not going to do truly do justice to a, a long Victorian classic novel, but uh, there was some very cool stuff in that. So I was looking forward to Vanity Fair, and I think, let's see, I'm 63. If I live till 90, I've been kind of doing my finances and stuff. That's another 27 years. I, I'm probably not going to get back to Vanity Fair. There's a lot of other books I want to read. And then I, I had uh, high hopes for Victober. I was going to at least get started on the Trollope. On, on Trollope. I've been promising myself that for a long time. Uh, you know, there's still some diggings to read. I might be able to squeeze a short one in after I finish this Joyce Carey trilogy. Uh, like maybe Cranford, I was thinking. I think that's pretty short, right? I, I like... Uh, uh, I'd like to read that. I have never read... Oh, who wrote Cranford? This is terrible. Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, I read her biography. I've talked about it on this channel. I read her uh, bi- biography of... of uh, oh, my brain... Uh, Charlotte Bronte, which is another one I, I could read. I could read Villette by Charlotte Bronte, which is the only Bronte book I haven't read, and that's I've been holding that in the back burner for a while. But we'll see. Maybe I can squeeze some other Victorian book in. I mean, I could I'm, could always read some more, some reread some Doyle, or, or reread some Sherlock Holmes, or read some of the other Doyle stuff on my list, but. Uh, I had higher hopes for myself. Didn't happen this year. Maybe next October. Maybe next uh, Garb August. Maybe next everything. Uh, I'm still reading Star Trek too. It's embarrassing. If 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 thirty year old me or twenty year old me could see all this Star Trek I'm reading, I would probably want to commit suicide before I ever came to this fate, but I am enjoying them. I read, so I read a couple of the Shatnerverse novels. This is Sh- William Shatner. And this one, oh, that cover doesn't even credit the real authors of the book, which are the Reeve Stevens, uh, a married couple. Um, so I read this one, and then the next one, whatever it was, there's three. This is where w- William Shatner, I mean, where Captain Kirk comes back to life after dying in the movies and has more adventures in the Next Generation era. Uh, I really liked it. I picked this one. This is the middle trilogy. I believe there's nine of these books, or maybe ten, but three trilogies, definitely. I picked this one because it had Voyager characters in it, and it involved the Mirror Universe. Um, so there's the Mirror, Captain Kirk, and stuff. and That stuff's pretty good, but I really I thought it was going to involve more it involved a uh, Voyager character, the Mirror Universe counterparts of the Voyager characters. A few of them, but they didn't really have as big a role as I thought they were going to have. I do know, however, I'm pretty confident, having read both of these books, that I that I got farther in the series than Mr. Shatner himself did. I can't believe he had anything to do with these books other than put his name on them. Because the first book, which is better than the second one, and there's three... Uh, three all the first book really doesn't even have that much Kirk in it. it sort of alternates 
back and forth between Kirk on whatever he's doing and the Enterprise encountering the mirror universe version of Voyager, sort of. But, uh, like, you know, William Shatner does ha- has no idea who these characters are. I mean, he knows some of the actors and stuff from conventions and things like this, but William Shatner has no idea of, of the... the <laughs> of the of the shows or these characters that came later, why would he? He's into his own thing. He's into horses and his own career and stuff like that. He's not he's not a Star Trek nerd, so he may have signed off on a few things or he may have had a few ideas. I can't imagine that he even really read these novels. Maybe that's cynical on my part, but but you know his name sells them and and they're they're pretty good. They're pretty well written. So that's all I have to talk about. I think I read a couple other things in Spanish and whatnot, a couple other, but I didn't really keep track of them, so that's where I'm at, I'll try and be more regular here, and I'm going to turn this around so you can see uh, my street view, maybe, this is an Airbnb, it's got a very nice balcony out here, it was very sunny the first couple days, now it's been raining quite a bit, I haven't seen much of the city other than my neighborhood. I'm only here for a month, unfortunately. Uh, you know, every place I, I go, I don't want to leave. I would, I want to live here it's so bad. I love Spain so far. It's fantastic. You know, as a person studying Spanish, um, but not very good, it's, it's so exciting here that people will not speak English to me, uh, which is great because every place else I've been, you know, they switch to English as soon as I try and interact with anybody that was like that in Scandinavia they look at me and they might think I'm Finnish or, or Swedish or whatever the different places I was in but <clears throat> as soon as they see I can't speak any of the local language they immediately switch to, to full-on perfect English better than anybody that you you or I know speaking English in Sweden or Finland then in Albania where I was for a year uh, they just look at me and they just speak in English. They know no, nobody's speaking Albanian. Uh, sometimes a, a very elderly person might might say something to me, and then I, I get to use my f- two or three phrases, apologetic phrases of, of uh, Albanian to say I can't understand them. But here it's great because uh, you walk into the. I, I mean this sincerely, uh, because at least in Madrid, at least the people I've met, they're really not interested in speaking. Uh, English. I don't know how common it is here, but you know, Spanish is obviously a, a major language, which is very useful all over the world. So maybe they don't have to learn it as much as a place like Albanian, where people know that most foreigners are not going to speak their language. But you know, if I don't under if I'm in the supermarket or whatever, or just a few other things I've had to do, pick up packages and stuff, and somebody speaks to me and I don't understand, I'll just say, you know, pero no, no entiendo. Mucho, and they'll go, oh, bueno, bueno, vale, and then they'll they'll just speak Spanish more, Spanish to me, and they'll like they might say it in a different way, or slightly slower, but not really. But um, I mean, they're not mean about it or anything. It's just like it's the same as if you're in the uh, United States and people only speak English, and they're just going to try and communicate as best they can with pointing and stuff like that. And it's very helpful because I was kind of concerned as an English speaker, it was even worth it to try and learn a language because most places I've been, as I said, you know, English is so prevalent now because of, really, I think, because of Netflix. Uh, that you know, you don't get that much of a chance to, to practice unless you're in like a deliberate situation that you set up. But but here it has, has not been like this, so I've got to use whatever little Spanish I can. It seems, even though I don't have, I haven't had, like, deep intellectual, long-ranging conversations with people or anything, it's sort of just by osmosis, it's, I've started to pick up on it more. What am I at, 19 minutes? I didn't mean to go into this language stuff, but it seems like my reading comprehension's a lot better. You know, of course, when I open up my phone, anything on the Internet, it defaults to Spain locations, so I get... Uh, stories and 
updates and stuff in in Spanish from, from in written in Spanish. So I'm enjoying it. I could, it made me very confident, even though I don't I can't speak that well or anything. I just the things I can say, I'm not intimidated to say them. Uh, but I feel like it's doable. I feel like I could do it. Is the more time I would spend in a Spanish-speaking country, the more time I would spend reading Spanish. It would, it's just a matter of time. You know, just year after year, I would get better and better, you know, if I give myself those opportunities. But we'll see. I'm here till December, till just after Christmas. Then I have to leave Europe because I, I am a, I'm a filthy American, so I only get 90 days uh, on my tourist visa in the European Union, in the Schengen area, you know, same as a Canadian or anybody else from outside the European, or a Brit, Brit a, a British person, although they voted for it, so what can you say? I guess that's enough rambling. Anyway, I'll try and do more reading. I feel a bit guilty about dropping out of the group read of Vanity Fair, but I just was not feeling it. I just couldn't do it. It just, I, I don't know what to say. I just i just found that the, his pro style very, very turgid. And I didn't want to uh, force myself to read it because, because why? It's not a class assignment. Although, so I got, I'm going to be more careful about what I commit to in terms of group reads. Because, I, you know, I was on, uh, uh, well, ostensibly on a listserv type thing, a chat thing about it but I, I never really interacted with it because I don't feel like going on there and bringing everybody down as reading the book and enjoying it and going that ah, it sucks I can't do this so I, I'm glad other people are enjoying it but I don't know if it's uh, people really enjoy these group reads but I, I was it always ends up to me feeling like uh, homework so maybe in the future I'll just do ones where I've already read the book and I know know I like it because I don't want to be a downer and and uh, bum everybody out about how it's crappy or maybe I'm just like a guy who reads a bunch of Star Trek books now who knows anyway uh, I'll be back I've got Amazon news to talk about news on uh, sort of sequels to previous videos I've done about the Amazon uh, universe and some issues I had with that, although I'm probably not leaving Amazon as as uh, I may have said in other videos. But anyway, a lot of cool stuff going on, but this is kind of low-key video just because I'm not used to talking on camera anymore. So I'll try and make myself do more and uh, just keep just keep doing your videos and, and keep reading books and we'll talk again.